Katie didn't. Good evening. I've never said that before. <laughs> Glad that you're here. We love our kids, don't we? We love your kids, your grandkids. <laughs> Glad that you are here. They're going to sing for us and, and have a little program, and then we're going to go eat and fellowship together. Glad that you are spending tonight with us. I want to uh, just welcome you, and I want to open us with a word of prayer. Can I do that? Pray with me. Father, I thank you, Lord, for just the celebration of being your people, how you have knit our hearts together, God. We thank you for... Uh, these people that you have assembled and called Wiley Methodist Church, God. We, we love you, and we know that you love us. I pray blessings on these children as they come and as they sing. I pray blessings on parents and grandparents and friends who've come to hear that. And, uh, Father, bless our time together tonight, and we are most especially grateful for your son Jesus. In his name, amen. And dinner together. First, we'd like to acknowledge that not all of our loved, lo loved ones are home celebrating this joyful holiday season with us. There are thousands of soldiers deployed overseas protecting our country by doing their jobs. Their separation from the, their family at this time of the year is a sacrifice we want to honor. Therefore, Dar Danny Hunter will begin our program by reading a poem called A Soldier's Christmas. Soldier on Watch, a Christmas poem. I gazed around the room and I cherished the sight. My wife was asleep, her head on my chest, my daughter beside me, angelic in rest. Outside the snow fell, a blanket of white, transforming the yard to a winter delight. My eyelids were heavy, my breathing was deep. Secure and surrounded by love, I would sleep in perfect contentment, or so it would seem. So I slumbered, perhaps I started to dream. The sound wasn't loud, and it wasn't too near, but I opened my eye when it tickled my ear. Perhaps just a cough I didn't quite know. Then the sure sound of footsteps outside in the snow. My soul gave a tremble I struggled to hear, and I crept to the door just to see who was near. Standing out in the cold and the dark of the night, a lone figure stood, his face weary and tight. A soldier, I puzzled, some twenty years old, perhaps a marine, huddled here in the cold. Alone in the dark, he looked up and smiled standing watch over me, my wife, and my child. What are you doing, I asked without fear. Come in here this moment, it's freezing out there. Put down your pack, brush the snow from your arm. You should be at home, this cold could do harm. For barely a moment I saw his eyes shift, away from the cold and the snow blown in drifts, to the window that danced with the warm fire's light. Then he sighed and he said, it's really all right. I'm out here by choice, I'm here every night. 
It's my duty to stand at the front of the line that separates you from the darkest of times. No one had to ask or beg or implore me. I'm proud to stand here like my father's before me. My gramps died at Pearl on a day in December. Then he sighed. That's a Christmas Graham always remembers. My dad stood his watch in the jungles of Nam, and now it's my turn, and so here I am. I've not seen my own son in more than a while, but my wife sends me pictures. He sure got her smile. Then he bent and he carefully pulled from his bag the red, white, and blue, the American flag. I can live through the cold and the being alone, away from my family, my house, and my home. I can stand at my post through the rain and the sleet. I can sleep in a foxhole with little to eat. I can carry the weight of killing another or lay down my life with my sisters and brothers who stand at the front against any and all to ensure for all time that this flag will not fall. So go back inside, he said, harbor no fright. Your family is waiting and I'll be all right. But isn't there something I can do at the least? Give you money, I asked, or prepare you a feast. It seems all too little for all that you've done, for being away from your wife and your son. Then his eye welled a tear that held no regret. Just tell us you love us and never forget to fight for our rights back at home while we're gone, to stand your own watch no matter how long. For when we come home either standing or dead, to know you remember we fought and we bled is payment enough when with that we will trust that we matter to you as you matter to us. shepherds were falling asleep when when suddenly out of the sky came a light an angel appeared making everything bright peace to each man not have fear for the news we have brought you will find very dear town of Bethlehem was so busy and loud getting ready for the census to count all the people it did not know what was going to take place that very night in the stable so quiet
Jesus delivered the good news. The shepherds went searching with no time to lose. And just as the angels had told them, they found Jesus with Mary and Joseph so proud. Christmas Day, a gift from his father. He, he planned it that way, and every dear person who hears and believes that moment from Jesus, they pardon, receives for all have sinned and have gone their own ways. But God listened closely when he chose to pray and choose to love Jesus who came down to earth to live and to die and to give a new birth. A silent night, our Redeemer came God's beloved Son, and his name was Jesus. In Indiana, a candy maker wanted to make a candy that could be a reminder of Jesus Christ. So he made the Christmas candy cane. He started off with a stick of pure white can hard candy. The white color symbolized the virgin birth and the sinless nature of Jesus. And the hard candy symbolized the solid rock which has the foundation of the church and firmness of the promises of God. The candy maker 
The candy maker made the candy in the form of a J, which represented the name of Jesus and the staff of the good shepherds. He then stained it with the three stripes, which showed the scourging Jesus re received and symbolized the blood shed by Christ on the cross. When, when you break the cane, it reminds us that Jesus' body was broken for us. Christmas candy cane poem. Look at the candy cane. What do you see? Stripes that are red, like the blood shed for me. White is for my Savior, who's sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that's for sure. Turn it around and a staff you will see. Jesus, my shepherd, was born for me. All right, let's be quiet. Let's be quiet and bow our heads so Annalise can pray. And then we'll sing one last song. Dear Lord, we pray for everyone here tonight. We pray for the for the dinner we're about to have and the um and all the children um up on that who who are singing tonight. And we pray that the food we have tonight is is some is really good. Oh, uh, amen. Well done. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed our little program tonight. You know, the kids really do sing these songs when we're back together, you know. So they really do sing. Am I on? Am I on? All right. Well, good. Well, we're excited. It's such a wonderful time of the year and just a blessed season. And it's just a joy to see these precious kids here and remembering that we are celebrating the birth of our son, Jesus. So as we get ready to head in, we're going to eat dinner. Uh, it's, it should be ready. If everybody will just go this direction, we are going to sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas one more time as y'all go out. And parents, if you'll come get your kids and head in there. Thank you again for bringing your kids. What a blessing. Everybody give a round of applause. Yeah.